Today I'm going to be sharing my homeschool curriculum picks for my eighth grader. Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is part of a series here on my channel where I am sharing all of our homeschool curriculum picks for the 2022-2023 school year. Today I'm going to be sharing curriculum for my new eighth grader, Leah, who is 13. Now, I do feel the need to do a disclaimer. I do this in all of these videos, so just bear with me. But I just want to say that we live in a awesome world of homeschool curriculum. There are thousands of different options out there. And so today I'm going to be sharing choices that I feel work well for this season in life for this specific child. In no way am I being prescriptive and telling you that these will be the perfect solution for your eighth grader. I really just share this information to encourage and inspire and give information and options of different curriculum out there. I am never trying to contribute to comparison or homeschool competition. That, that is not my intention. And I, I know you guys know that, but I feel the need to put that out there. Okay, now that I've got that out of the way, let me just introduce myself in case you are new around here. My name is Sarah. I am currently homeschooling four kiddos, a ninth grader, eighth grader, third grader, and a pre-K, and then I have a two and a half year old toddler as well. We have been homeschooling for just over 10 years now, and I always wanna say that that does not mean that I know what I'm doing. I do have experience, but it, it just means I am piecing this together every year just like the rest of you. So that being said, let me give you a little bit of perspective or framework about how I came to these choices for curriculum. My daughter Leah is going into eighth grade, and at this point in her homeschooling journey, she is able to do most, if not all, of her homeschool on her own independently. I could just hand her a checklist of work to do and she could go off and, and pretty much do a lot of it on her own. Read a chapter in a book, take a test, watch a DVD lesson, that, that kind of thing. But that does not mean that that's what I want for all of our homeschool days to be. I still want to have some time of all of us gathering as a family and doing schoolwork together. And so for eighth grade, I'm trying to balance those two things. Having some things that she can go off and do on her own while I'm working with other siblings, but then also having a couple of subjects that she can do with us together as a group. I also wanna mention that Leah does pair off with her older brother, Noah, who is in ninth grade. They do a lot of their homeschool work together. I actually shared his ninth grade curriculum picks a few videos back. I'll, I'll make sure to link all of this below. Anytime that you can pair two kids together and let them share curriculum and do things together, that that's what you do. So since a very young age, Leah has always kind of been working up and doing a lot of the work that her older brother has been doing. So you will notice a lot of these picks are very, very similar, if not the same as to what Noah is doing for ninth grade. Now, that being said, I do wanna put this in here. In eighth grade, you can start working towards high school credits, especially in those core subjects, math, English, history, science. If your child is ready to start um, doing some high school courses, you can start working on those credits in eighth grade. And so that's what I'm choosing to do with Leah. I definitely feel like she is ready and able to tackle some high school courses. And so you will see that reflected here. I'm, I have a goal that hopefully she will do three, maybe four credits of high school work in eighth grade. Okay, I, I think that's covered all my bases. Let me just double check. Okay, yeah, I just checked my notes. That's everything I wanted to say. Let's jump in and just go through subject by subject like I always do on these videos. I will be sure to put timestamps down below. Uh, so if you wanna move around or jump around in the video, you have the freedom to do that. All right, let's start with math. That's always the first subject that my kids tackle every single morning. This will probably be no surprise to you, but Leah is going to continue using Math UC. She is about 50% done with the pre-algebra level. I, I didn't bring that upstairs, it's down in the basement. Uh, but she's about halfway through that. So I'm thinking probably by mid-fall, even towards January, she will be ready to start working in Algebra 1. And so we're really excited for her to move up into this level. Again, this will be for high school credit uh, once she starts it. 
Now, paired along with this, she does use all of the Matthew C blocks, the manipulatives that go along with all of the levels. She also has a scientific calculator that she's allowed to use on most lessons. And then I also went ahead and purchased for her, this was Noah's idea, I bought a bunch of graph paper in bulk for the kids for them to use as scrap paper to do math problems on. Um, some of these problems get pretty lengthy and so having extra paper to work them out is really helpful. Now, just a little peek into how we use Matthew C on a day in and week out basis. On Mondays, my kids watch the DVD lesson that comes with each of the Matthew C levels. They will watch that video that is taught by Mr. Demi. And then the two of us will take worksheet A in the lesson and go through and do a couple of example problems together. I will make sure that they're really understanding the concept and how to do the math on their own before I kind of unleash them and let them do math for the rest of the week. Then from that point on, they will do worksheets B through D as, as much as they feel like they need to do for the rest of the week to get ready for the test that they will take on Friday. Now, I don't go through and grade all of those worksheets. I actually let them use the instructor's guide and check their work every day to make sure they're on track with the math. Um, but I don't grade those or keep track of those for their high school grade. Instead, what I do is I use the test book that comes with Matthew C and they take a weekly test for every single chapter. And this is what I grade and use to keep a tally for their accumulated math grade for the year. And so that's just a little peek in how we do Matthew C. Most of the time we're able to tackle one lesson a week. Sometimes if they get a little stuck, it might take us two weeks or more. But the biggest thing with Matthew C to remember is that it is a mastery math, which means you should not move on to the next lesson unless you have mastered the current lesson that you are on. There is some built-in review, but it is mastery based. So just don't be tempted to let your kids just fly through this course. Make sure that they really understand every single chapter before they move on to the next lesson. All right, and then for language arts, I am doing English grammar and composition with the kids this year. Leah is really just gonna kind of pair up and do language arts with Noah for the most part this year. First of all, they are going to finish up analytical grammar. We started this last year and we did season one in the book. I actually did an entire flip through video and review of this curriculum. I'll link it down below for you guys. But in general, this is a very rigorous and in-depth grammar curriculum. And so I, I really hope that she will finish season two this year. It would be great if she could get through seasons two and three. We'll just play that by ear but she'll continue working in analytical grammar. As for writing to go along with that, Leah is going to continue in IEW or Institute for Excellence in Writing. You guys know we, we love IEW. We've been using it for four or five years now. And so this year, Leah, again, along with Noah, is going to move on to Level B Year 2. They did Level B Year 1 last year, so this is just kind of the natural progression. Now, I mentioned this in my ninth grade curriculum pick video, but I think it's really worth sharing, so I'll, I'll mention it here as well. This spring, I stopped at the IEW booth at a homeschool conference and talked with one of their representatives. It was so helpful. She went through and helped me decide what level would fit each one of my kids. She spent a lot of time with me. She did share, and I thought this was so useful. If you're like me or like most homeschoolers, when you start a new curriculum in let's say August, you do really well and you chug along and do, do all of the lessons all the way through about February or March, and then maybe you start to slow down a little bit. And you know, there's not many homeschoolers out there that ever completely finish a curriculum. Well, what ends up happening is that my kids tend to do really well in units one through six and get really familiar with that content, but they don't have as much practice for units seven, eight, nine, and the later units in IEW. And so she mentioned to me that doing these year twos in the structure and style that they're really helpful to get that extra practice for the later units in IEW if your kids are puttering out each year like, like we kind of do. 
So I hope that information is helpful to you. It was really eye-opening for me. I will link my favorites page down below um, in the description box. It's just my page on the IEW website where I share all of my favorite levels for writing, for grammar, you know, all the things. All right, and then the last vein of language arts, Leah is going to be finishing up Spelling you see this year, she is going to work through level G modern milestones. And wow, this does feel like a milestone. She has completed every single level in spelling you see, and this is her very last one. So I feel like that's really a triumph. We love this curriculum. Again, used it for years and years and years. I, I really see how it has improved my kids spelling through dictation, through copy work, through chunking. We, we just love spelling, you see. So I'm excited to have her finish this this year. And then moving on to history and literature. History is one of the subjects we are going to be doing as a group, as a family this year. And this is where, if you're wondering where Gather Round is coming in, this is it. We are going to use the Gather Round US History mini units as our core to study US or American history. Now, I, I, we're gonna start in unit one and work our way through. Hopefully we'll get through all of them, we'll just see. But we're gonna use this as the spine for our history curriculum. Now, my goal for Leah is to really work on her note-taking as I read aloud from the teacher guide every day. I want her to really improve in taking notes and making flashcards and being able to take information that she is hearing audibly and put it down into note form to study for tests. I feel like this is a skill that kids really need for high school. If they end up going to college, they're definitely going to need there. And so we're really gonna focus on note taking. Now, along with this US history unit, I did go ahead and purchase several audio books. Oop, I just dropped them. From the YWAM booth at the conference, um, I picked up, let's see, Theodore Roosevelt, Captain John Smith, Abraham Lincoln, just a bunch of these biographies that are audio books. I thought this would be really fun for the kids to listen to throughout the year. And then for literature, I am pairing the novels, the books that I'm asking my older kids to read along with our units from Gather Round. So I have a big stack of books here. I'm hoping we'll get through all of them this year. Um, if not, I can always use one or two of these as a read aloud and let them read the other ones on their own. Uh, but let me just go through here. I'll, I'll do them in order. Now, we do not use a formal literature curriculum in our house. Uh, we do something I like to call literature logs or lit logs. And basically what this means is that no matter what age my child is, I pick a book for them to read and I will give them a specific amount of chapters or pages that they have to read for the week on their own. And then at the end of the week, they have to do a written narration of what they read as well as an illustration of something that they read about in the book. And so obviously, depending on how old your child is, my, my third grader, she, she can maybe do two or three sentences, whereas Noah and Leah turn in, you know, two, three, four paragraphs for a written narration. And their illustrations look like art projects. They're amazing. And so that's how we're going to cover literature for eighth grade. All right, and then moving on to science. This was the subject that has kept me up at night. I I've really had a difficult time thinking through and deciding what curriculum I wanted to use for science for my kids. And I decided to just go ahead again and let Leah jump up and do science with Noah. So she is going to be using Discovering Design with Earth Science by Dr. J. Weil. This is published by Berean Builders. This comes recommended from a homeschool mama friend of mine. Thank you, Meredith. Um, but I'm really excited for her to do this. Now, this is could be an eighth grade and up curriculum, so I could just count this as her eighth grade science, or depending on what she does with it this year, you can pair this with labs and make this a physical science credit for high school, um, a lab credit for high school. And so that's my goal for her with this. We'll just see if she's able to keep up with Noah and do that for the school year. Um, but I picked this curriculum in general. I, I'm just so excited with some of the extra options that went along with this. Um, where did I put it? 
So first of all, I went ahead and purchased this. It's an audiobook, uh, a little plug-in for your computer, and it will read the textbook aloud to your children. I think this was like $19. It was not expensive at all. Um, I also mentioned that just for easeability, for mama's sake, I went ahead and purchased the lab kit to go along with this course. I think it was $70, $80 range. It comes with every single ingredient that you're possibly going to need for every experiment. Uh, I'm not gonna have to go around my house last minute and search for peroxide or salt or tea bags or, or whatever they need for their labs. It's all right here so that they can do it on their own. There should be enough supplies for both Noah and Leah to do this together. I'm even thinking that some of these experiments we could, you know, loop Mariah in on, my third grader, and do them together for her to kind of watch them do. I think it'll be really, really fun. Lastly, the other thing that comes with this unit, if you want to purchase it, there are video lessons to go along with every chapter in the book um, through their website on Vimeo. You can purchase those one chapter at a time. Let's say your child has a chapter they're just really struggling to understand. You could purchase just that one chapter to have them watch an instructor teach it to them, or you can purchase the entire year's worth of instruction. I think that's probably the option we're gonna go with because honestly, science is not one of my strong points. It's not one of my favorite subjects. I, I feel very overwhelmed at teaching high school science. And so I, I really think the videos will be a nice band-aid to help them get through when, when mama is not as helpful. All right, and then foreign language. As I mentioned earlier, in eighth grade, you can go ahead and start studying a foreign language for high school credit. So Leah in the past has slowly worked through the song school Spanish courses from Classical Academic Press. We absolutely loved those. They were a great introduction to the Spanish language for our family. But for a high school credit, I decided to do the distance learning option from BJU Press Spanish 1. And so it came with a textbook, an activities manual, handouts, and then, oh, and a Spanish English dictionary. And then I chose to do the DVDs that you rent from BJU Press. I will have to return these at the end of the year. Um, they also have online courses available that you can purchase for the year. Um, but these have a Spanish native speaking teacher going through and teaching every single chapter in the book, every single lesson. And so I think that this will be a really good fit um, for Noah and Leah to do together, my eighth and ninth graders. And again, this can count towards high school credit for her. Okay, and then as far as other electives, Leah will continue taking piano lessons. This is something she's been doing since, I don't know, preschool, kindergarten area. She's, um, I mean, amazing. She plays beautifully. So she will continue to work through piano. We will also do a PE class or gym class where we go to a homeschool gym class once a week here in our area. She's also on swim team and does a lot of other sports, dance, things like that. So PE will definitely be covered. And then along with Noah, she is going to do a couple of art courses this summer. Um, we are going to do painting with watercolor pencils and drawing with graphite pencils. These are both from Artistic Pursuits. This will be my first time using um, an art course from this company, but I'm, I'm really excited because, this won't shock you, they come with DVD instructions. Um, each course is, I believe, 36 different projects. And so this will just be something really fun for Noah and Leah to work through together over the summer. And then last but not least, Bible. I didn't bring up the Bible studies with me. Sorry, I left them in the basement. I'll try to put a visual right here for you guys. But Leah is gonna continue working through the not consumed youth Bible studies. I bought the entire nine pack of studies last year when they were on sale. And her and Noah have just loved these studies. They, they go through them one at a time. I think they both completed five last year. So there'll be four for them to do this year. It has been such a blessing to them. They've just really enjoyed them. They take about 20 minutes or so every single morning. So I, I just can't recommend them enough. They're very, very solid Bible studies, not consumed. Okay guys, well that's it. Those are all of my eighth grade curriculum picks. I know that was a lot, but again, this will be spread out over 12 months of schooling, if not a little bit more. If you have any questions, 
please feel free to leave me a comment down below and be sure to subscribe to my channel. I'm going to continue to release these curriculum pick videos over the next week or so. And then I'm also going to be releasing curriculum wrap ups for the curriculum that we did this past year in school. Those will be coming up soon as well. So you're not gonna to wanna to miss any of that. Be sure to subscribe. All right, natives are getting restless. I hear everybody coming up for lunch, so I've gotta go. Hope y'all are having a great week. See you later.